But if that's true, if it's true that it's the most wonderful time of the year, then why are there still so many who are anxious? This is that time of the year where it's supposed to, it's, right? It's supposed to provide an escape from all of the worries and the fears of this life. And yet, even with all of the celebrations that are going on, all the traditions that are happening, sometimes, sometimes it could kind of seem like week after week is a blur. Sometimes it can seem like uncertainties are just rising through the roof and, and then problems are, are creeping at the door. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But then why, why? Why is it that maybe there's still a lot of anxiousness for so many? For some, maybe, maybe it's just a list of concerns. And sometimes those concerns, they can, they can kind of seem like they're small or, or petty. Like maybe this is the first Christmas in a long while where all the older children will be back, but they're not so little anymore. And so you wonder, like, how are the conversations going to go? What do you talk about? Will they actually want to be at home or are they going to want to go off and do something on their own and be with friends and do their own thing? Things are just a little bit different. Maybe, maybe it's at school. Maybe it's at school and the concerns, they seem so small and maybe so small that they seem petty, like, ah, oh, how is it going to go, this conversation with my classmate? How is it going to be? Will there still be respect? Will we still be kind to one another? Is there still going to be tension? Is there love? Or is it just different? Maybe, maybe it seems small, so small that it seems petty, right? Maybe it's at work or at home, either with coworkers or children or spouses and Oh, the problems don't necessarily seem to be settled or diffusing, but they seem to be growing. And that's not supposed to be the case, right? It's Christmas in just a couple of weeks. It's supposed to be peaceful. It's supposed to be happy. Not filled with fear or worrisome, but good. Just good, right? Sometimes they seem like they're petty or small concerns, but that doesn't change the fact that they're real. They are real, and, and they, they amount. They weigh up. They pile up. This is that time of the year where it seems like it's supposed to be free of all the worries and concerns, but what do we know about this time of the year and life in general? We do know this, that it's still filled with things that we can't predict. Filled with outcomes that we can't foresee. Filled with a future that maybe we're not so in control of. Yet the good news of Advent is this. The good news of Advent is this tonight for us. That the days are numbered when it comes to fear and anxiety. They are numbered. Why? Because the birth of Jesus, the birth of Jesus and the fact that he's going to come back means that we are living right here, right now in an era of peace that will never end. Peace that, peace that, erases all fears. Peace that, that is actually ours right here, right now, today. And so even though maybe the list of, of fears is long, and at the top of that list, maybe, just maybe, it's fear of the future. And that makes sense, right? It makes sense that fear would be at the top of that list because we don't know what's going to be tomorrow. We don't necessarily know if our choices are the surefire guarantee of what we can expect to come. We lack control. We understand that. 
And sometimes our greatest fear is the fact that we're not in control. But this is Advent. This is Advent. And Psalm 112 tonight, Psalm 112 provides such comfort. It's a future-focused psalm. It's a future-focused psalm, and the writer is likely David. And when you look at what David writes, he details for us with such great detail what's in store for God's people. And if you take a look, it looks bright. Our households will be filled with blessings. Our hearts will be overflowing with grace and mercy. And our hands will be eager to show generosity. He doesn't stop there. He says that we will be unmoved, right, by the evil of this world, not shaken. We will be satisfied and completely satisfied with the things of God. And then the most notable part in this psalm, maybe it's just me, maybe it is, but the most notable part, I think, is David writes that we will have no fear of bad news. No fear of bad news, but steadfast hearts trusting in the Lord. You let that sink in for just a moment. Not only does the future for the children of God show blessings from the Lord and spiritual maturity, but also this unshakable peace that we have. It gets you thinking a little bit can you imagine not having any fear over bad news? Can you imagine that? It makes you wonder, David, like, uh, how can you say this with such certainty? Like, David, come on. Do you know something we don't? What David knows is what we know. Because what is he doing? He's looking at a track record of a good and gracious God, of an awesome God. God has provided for everything for us, down to our basic needs, all the way to everything we need to spiritually survive in this life, and he does it all through his word. And looking at all of that, David can't help but blurt out in the psalm before this. He can't help but blurt it out. He says, great, great are the works of the Lord. His name is holy and awesome. You know, you take time to reflect on God's faithfulness in the past, and it stirs a sense of fear within us. It stirs up a sense of fear, but not, not a fear of punishment or pain. No, that's not what David is saying at the beginning of this psalm when he says, blessed are those who fear the Lord. He's not scared. He's not scared as he reflects on God's goodness. So what kind of fear is this? David has a kind of awe and respect. He... He's humbled. He feels so incredibly small in comparison to God's power. And he feels so incredibly loved because God takes and uses his power for David's good. That is our good and gracious God. And that's fear. A fear that is deep filled with awe and respect, mixture of humility and honor, moving David to live life confidently as he looks and, and he remembers, everything that I believe is anchored on everything that God has done for me. So there is no fear of the future. The cure for fear of the future is fear of the Lord. And that's our Christmas gift tonight. That's ours. That's what makes a real Christmas a Christmas without fear of the future. It's special and it gives us opportunity to head out into the future, head out into the next day with confidence, right? With confidence knowing that God has a wonderful track record and he's done that for us. You take a look at his past, and here it is. It's the most jaw-dropping thing to happen in this world. The most 
generous, so loving, it makes everything else look like it doesn't even compare. The greatest thing to happen in this world, it's greater than the Ark of the Covenant. It's greater than the parting of the Red Sea. And here it is. God sends us his son. God on earth. He takes on human flesh. It's peace. It's Emmanuel. That's who we have awe and respect for. That's where no fear of the future comes from. So, if we anchor ourselves in that peace, I guess my question to all of us tonight is, what if this Advent, what if this Advent and Christmas time, instead of, instead of fearing all of the worries and concerns and problems of this life, what if the Spirit, and through the work of the Spirit, would move us to fear the Lord? What if, through the work of the Spirit, we were to feel so incredibly small in comparison to God's power. What if through the work of the Spirit, we were, we were to feel so incredibly loved through his power for us? How would that reframe the way we move and breathe over the next couple of weeks, months, and years? Well, I, I guess maybe We'd walk around every single day as people forgiven, people enabled to live because they're forgiven. I, th I think maybe we'd walk around like that, forgiven because God sent his one and only son for our sins. We'd, we'd plan, we'd plan weekly, knowing that he's always been in control and he continues to be in control. And that he also cares for our every most basic need. We would, we would decorate and we would sing hymns and sing songs. We'd bake cookies. We'd wear Christmas pajamas. We would live. We would live. Knowing that God has given us this gift of his son and his son reigns. He reigns for every single moment of our lives and for our eternal salvation. So yeah, a real Christmas means no fear of the future. And we fear the Lord.